was I was elated because there was a process that was, that was being used to develop training. You get common terminology, um, you, get, uh, you get a common road map, uh, you get tools and techniques that everyone can use that are, that are the same. We had uh, things like the knowledge and skill matrix uh, that really uh, gave us a road map to what uh, it was going to be in the training material. The process really did help facilitate getting more done in less time. For others, seeing the process for the first time, I just tell them to trust the process. I believe that a side benefit of the modular instruction process is that it made us think about our system uh, in a much more complete uh, fashion than we had previously uh, because we really had to take a look at how all of the different pieces of the system fit together uh, as, as well as the way that they fit together within the training. Instead of being just focused on what training product we were going to develop and what that training product would look like, we were really thinking more along the lines of what can we do to help these people perform the job responsibilities that are expected of them. And I felt like the results from the analysis phase really helped change our way of thinking to that. The benefit for me for using uh, the, uh, the process for developing training is, is the fact that it gives you a systematic approach to developing training. Uh, starting with uh, getting the right people involved, uh, doing the proper analysis, and with that analysis also develop uh, the, the curriculum. And the goal is to take people and make them efficient supervisors, effective supervisors. And so the idea of knowing what is required and what are the skills that are needed to meet those requirements, I think is very critical. It's a comprehensive system, and it's, a, it's close to a total system. Uh, and it allows uh, us, from a General Motors perspective, to work with uh, many vendors that provide us with uh, instructional design resources and bring those vendors and those resources into the company using a common set of rules and a common set of tools, uh, which will lead to a common output. And that's really the main benefit. It provided so much detail as far as what the job responsibilities were for the people that we were developing training for. So we were very focused on who those people were and what their job responsibilities were and what deliverables they were expected to produce. We looked at the performance uh, uh, that was required to be a supervisor in Tool and Dye. We identified uh, uh, what the uh, um, performance criteria was and is and also identify those skills and knowledge that, that were required in order to, uh, to uh, perform and, and uh, be efficiently in, in that area. So here we were at the end of the analysis phase with 10 people from the organization and all 10 of them thinking, yeah, this, that is it. That is the supervisor's job in, in Metal Fab Division. We, we've captured it. When I first became involved in the uh, modular instruction process, uh, I was fairly amazed at the amount of upfront work that uh, had to be done before uh, going into the actual training development. Uh, but uh, I believe that all of this upfront work was time very well spent. When we started talking to people about doing analysis and design, you know, every, everyone wanted to jump into uh, development. You know, it's, you know, just get out there and start hammering nails on this house and putting up boards because we know there's got to be a room here and a room there. Um, uh, some of the folks that we were talking to were looking at us like, w what's going on with, with all this? Don't you, you know, shouldn't you be scheduling instructors and things like that? And we said, no, we're going to follow this process. And when they see what we've got accomplished in this short period of time, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been remarkable, really. I had some reservation because there was a lot of data there. And, uh, and wasn't sure how we were going to use that data as we move forward. And, and, but it, so far it has worked out extremely well. Um, and I am totally satisfied with, with the product. But I felt that even though it looked very complex and very big, uh, 
the magnitude of what we were doing would seem uh, like it was, it was going to take a lot of time to complete. Uh, I think that the process itself allowed us to get the task done in a very efficient and effective manner. If you take a look at, at when we started the, the process, the MC process for, for MFD's Tool and Die Supervisor College, that was, that was March. And if you look at right now, it's July, and we, we not only have people hired and started, but the calendars are all set. We've identified exactly how we're going to use all of the existing training. We've identified all of the new gaps. We've got uh, the plan laid out. All of the existing building blocks are, are there. All of the new stuff has been scoped out. And uh, it's just a few months after we started. Immediately after we made it through the analysis phase, the customer took ownership of all the outputs that we produced in analysis. And that continued right through design. And when we wound up with the final training product, the customer was the owner of it, which is something I've wanted to accomplish for a long time, but been unable to until I started using this process. It allocates the right responsibilities to the right people. And by that I mean it puts the customer in charge of content, which is their area of expertise, and they want to be in charge of it. And it lets training professionals focus where they can add the most value, and that's in the area of creating training and development products. There's been a lot of people involved with this project um, throughout MFD and at, and at OED that have made this a success and have, have done so much in such a short time. Well, my involvement in the MCMI process uh, is at the management level, uh, working with the uh, Engineering Education and Training Advisory Council and in support of uh, curriculum development teams th that work for the GM customer. Our role is to work with them, uh, train resources and in instructional design so that they're able to meet the needs of the General Motors customer uh, in the analysis and design and development of uh, training. The project management built into the process is, is excellent built into all of the templates and everything else, you've got, uh, you've got little PowerPoint presentations to use at the, uh, at, the, at the gate review meeting. So if somebody says, well, this is, we're here to review the analysis or the design, you've, you've got a little mini presentation in there to recap where you are in the process and uh, where you should be and you know, what were the outputs from the last process and how are we going to use those and what will be the the outputs uh, for, for this next step in the process. The quality of the design was good and we, we knew it was. There was logic behind how we had ordered and sequenced all of the courses. We had used a lot of existing training. And, and I think the approach that we're using by getting people out of the organization involved, uh, using the expertise of OED and their consultants, uh, I think that, uh, uh, that, that we're taking the right steps, we're doing the right things. If there's not the commitment on the part of an organization to provide the resources to do the front end analysis and design planning, uh, then the system won't work. I find that to be probably the, the weakest um, element of what we've done so far, is being able to pull people out of the organization to work with the process. So and I'm, I'm not sure if that's the, the fault of the process or just, a, just a, the organization itself. It is a rigorous system, therefore it does require time invested up front uh, on the part of the right technical and management experts. And so it, that obviously becomes a weakness if, if that commitment isn't, isn't possible. I would say that uh, anyone who's becoming involved in the modular instruction process is that they really uh, should get the right people into the room uh, that have the right knowledge set uh, and be willing to spend the time uh, that it takes to get the upfront work done because the results will greatly benefit from all of that. My advice to anybody using these two processes is to remember that both MC and MI, both of these processes are, are based on, on good principles, business principles, uh, training principles, project management principles. Probably the greatest point of uh, uh, 
surprise has been the degree that that uh, our line managers are accepting and buying into the process. Uh, that's something that, that has been uh, a very positive. And I felt really confident in our design that it was a very robust design and that it was very complete and it encompassed all of the areas of performance that the customer had told us about. Everyone that we've talked to and showed the curriculum to right you know, to date, you know, they've been saying things like, uh, I wish this were there when I became a supervisor, when I hired into General Motors, why didn't somebody have something like this prepared for me and laid out you know, for my first 18 months? So, so far so good. I think that we truly have a winner here in regards to the curriculum.